Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and share words with you through scripture, through prayer, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It is Thursday, March the 2nd. Can you believe it? 2023. Time is definitely waiting on no one. I'd like to say thank you for those who uh, did join us for Bible study on last night with Faith Outreach Deliverance Church, Bridgeton, New Jersey. Uh, awesome time in the Lord. Let me tell you something. Great, awesome time. We are grateful and just walk in the spirit of humility as we continue to teach on the series God Provides. Today, I want to take a look at something we, we've heard countless times over the years. We read it, and, and many dare to go to this passage of Scripture simply because uh, we, as women, feel that, hey, I can't measure up to that type of person. So I want to take a look at Proverbs 31. That's right, I want to take a look at Proverbs 31. And I want to uh, just share with you some words of encouragement. We actually uh, released our first newsletter for Sisters in Unity Ministry on yesterday, and we utilized portions of Proverbs 31. I like Proverbs 31 because it reminds me, it teaches me that this particular woman, this great example in the Word of God, which all individuals in the Word of God are, are examples, they are for a testimony, teaches me, let me say, teaches me that she did and worked according to her abilities. She gave according to what was in her. It was uh, years ago when I begin to hear about Proverbs 31, there was just this picture of this woman with this basket on her head, and, and, and many individuals taught that you had to do all of these things to be considered virtuous. And I am saying to us that we have been given gifts and talents by God. And we have to learn how to utilize them to best fit our households and our daily lives. Uh, just because you don't know how to uh, knead bread, you know, make dough from scratch and make biscuits does not mean that you're not a virtuous woman. Or that uh, you don't have business sense. It does not mean that you are not a virtuous woman. What the scripture of passage really lays out is that uh, this particular woman was gifted and talented as we all are. We have different gifts given unto us by God. And she utilized them in her home and in uh, those she connected with in outreach uh, to the best of her ability. And that she developed a, a method of putting place uh, things into priority so that nothing went lacking in the different areas of her life. So for, for years, as I have said, the, the, there has been this teaching, this persona, that if you didn't do all of these things that this woman does in the Bible, that you are not virtuous. And that is just absolutely not true. To be virtuous means that uh, you have a, uh, a strength of stability, a foundation, and that you have developed. Hey, you know what? I know how to do this. I know how to do that. And I'm going to utilize what I have in my home uh, to make it flow better, to meet the needs of those who are in the home with me. Also, a miscommunication, a misunderstanding is that uh, if you were not married, then you could not fit the role of a vir virtuous woman. That is not true. Uh, God is not uh, permitting some to get married. Not everybody is going to be married. And so you cannot say, we cannot teach because, oh, I'm not married, 
that I can't be the virtuous woman. Yes, you can. Because, once again, you have gifts and talents. And uh, we all have to discover what those talents are and to utilize them to the best of our ability in our homes. Uh, also, what if you are married with no children? Well, then guess what? You can still be the virtuous woman. As a matter of fact, it's not just a woman. It is a virtuous person virtuous vessel and so I love this particular passage of scripture because it teaches it teaches us so very very well and so we're going to dive into it I absolutely pray that what we're going to share with you encourages your heart encourages your mind and once again look at what you already possess you are already gifted and you already have talents you have abilities our abilities are not the same. Uh, it may, you know, some things I can do, you do very well. Uh, or we can do the same thing, but we can do it at a different level and at a different way. Uh, it doesn't take anything one from another. Um, you are virtuous is what I want to say to you today. Uh, those who are in our listening audience, we decided not to do a video today simply because uh, of ministering and, and, and teaching last night in Bible study. I uh, just, you know what, so let's just do one portion today uh, to God be the glory as we are being refreshed and replenished. But I definitely wanted to come and just share with you and remind you, you are virtuous. You are virtuous because God has already blessed you. God has already equipped you. He has already prepared you for what is coming your way. And so when it comes, you already know how to work in that capacity. If you are preparing for marriage or are already married, then uh, develop a system in your home that benefits yourself and your spouse. And if you have children, uh, your needs are going to change as they grow and hopefully go to college or uh, military service and move out of the home and then they start their own families and they're going to develop skills to benefit their own household. But you are virtuous. You most certainly are virtuous. And if there are areas in your home, in your life that you are not satisfied with, uh, make some changes. That's right, make some changes. But it's all going to start within you. It is all in you. So let's take a look at Proverbs 31. And we're going to start at the 10th verse. It says, Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? Who can find a woman? Who can find an individual who has discovered her worth who understands who she is and, and she uses her worth and her value not to lord over anyone but to the benefit of her household and for those she comes into contact with who can find that type of individual mm -hmm. yes you are unique and you are the apple of God's eye you have been creatively beautifully created in the image of our Father which is in heaven. You have certain gifts, spiritual gifts. You have talents. You have ability. There is a uniqueness about you. Uh, use it for the benefit, not just of yourself. Make your abode a home. Make it a home, not just a house. Make it a home, comfortable with peace and love and joy and your talents you utilize in your home to benefit those who are there because charity starts at home here the virtuous woman took care of home first some along the way take care of everything else and everyone else except for home 
and those individuals are left depleted. Their homes are in disarray and out of order. Their lives are in disarray and out of order. But yet, they are over here trying to fix this and over there trying to fix that. And I don't believe that's godly order. I believe charity starts at home. I believe that I cannot give what I have not applied to myself. Neither can I give what I don't have the ability to do. And so I like to put into practice, if I don't do it for me, I can't do it for you. Mm -mm. I cannot uh, go out and clean here and there when my house is out of order. What sense does that make? I'm going to go over and perfect and clean somewhere else, but I'm going to come back and not touch my own. That's not order. That is not what the virtuous woman teaches. Mm -mm. That's not what she teaches. So it is a very, very good lesson for all of us to learn. Uh, charity, once again, it starts at home. And it starts with you in the individual. This virtuous woman had standards. She had things in place. She set a tone of priority. And once she had those things established within herself, then she could l allow them to be expressed and executed in her home. But it starts within the individual. Work according to your ability. Do according to your ability. If you want your house to be a home, then let it start within you. Define what makes my house a home. Define what you want out of the relationships that you are in. You define those things. You set the, the foundation. You set the morals. You set the standards. And you build from there. And then you can share those things with others. So where it says, who can find a virtuous woman? Who can find that individual who is stable in what she wants? who has an understanding, who has a vision, who has a perception of this is this is what I want. And what I want is what I'm going to give. Oftentimes we want what we're not willing to give. Whether it is in business or ministry or our personal lives, the majority of us people, we want what we're not willing to give. We don't want to pay the full price of something, but we want the very best. We want to nickel and dime. Uh, we don't want to pour in, but we want a pot full of oil. Uh, and that's just not the way that it works. So when you take a look at Proverbs 31, it is not saying that you got to get up in the middle of the night and and, and you got to do what she did. No, it is a standard of putting things in priority. So, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? The heart of her husband doeth safely trust in her so that he shall not have no need of spoil. That means, guess what? He trusts her. He can confide in her. She makes the house a home. They are competence one to another. Now, if an individual just wants to go out and cheat, hey, that's what they're going to do. But it should not be because there is any lack in you. Mm -hmm. It's a lesson. It's a good lesson. It's a lesson. I'm not sure how often it is taught. But I think that it is a lesson that needs to never cease. As in all things, give thanks. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. In all things, give thanks unto you, our Father, which is in heaven. You know, we had a, an interruption there, technical difficulty. So I just conti continued to sit here and, and pray and give God all of the thanks. All of the honor and praise due unto his name. I got my 
hot cup of coffee from my coffee maker over there that I made just before going on air and just continue to pray. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we do apologize. We had some technical difficulty. We're talking about Proverbs 31, the virtuous woman. That's right. I truly believe that the virtuous woman is a great teaching tool for all of us. It teaches us how to be and it it allows us to take a look at ourselves to say, you know what? Am I utilizing my abilities that I have in my home? Have I set a standard of what I expect uh, to receive? Because I should be a mirror of a reflection of what I want. And so if I want it, I should be able to give it. That's what I'm saying. And so here the virtuous woman, she had a standard that was set. Uh, she gave what was in her. She had gifts and talents, and she utilized those things in her home. And so it, it reciprocated on what she received. So let's take a look at this. Uh, let's see. Um, verse 13 says, She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her handmaid, her maidens. She considereth the field and buyeth it, and with the fruit of her hand she planteth the vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and her strength and strengthened her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, her candle goeth not out by night. This is good this is good I want to get to the portion um, that it says that her children verse 28 her children arise up and call her blessed her husband also and he praises her so what she gave to them came back to her she gave what was inside of her she took her gifts and her talents and utilized them in her home according to her ability that is what virtue is all about. That is what being a, a virtuous woman, a virtuous individual, a vessel is all about. And so I wanted to just come by today and tell you, you are virtuous. When you utilize what you have been given for the benefit of your home and then share it, that's virtue. You have standards. You have goals. It is foundational. You do it because you know that God gave it to you. But I must say this and I cannot express it enough. Charity starts at home. Charity starts at home. Works are not going to get us into heaven. And so sometimes we can find ourselves just being busybodies all over the place, everywhere, 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 doing everything. And home is neglected. Home is not taken care of. So here is what is transpiring and the Holy Spirit has been dealing with me about. When I, I've shared this before, when I look around the room and I don't like clutter and uh, I, I feel a shift in the spirit and and, and I go through this self-inventory of what needs to be removed, what has served its purpose, and I go through that because I am making room for what God has for me. And so sometimes busyness takes me out of the things I like. You know, uh, I, I, I love things in order. Uh, I used to tell my children growing up, you know, hey, your mama got... OCD, um, but I had to learn how to uh, not allow that to overlap on them. And sometimes my busyness, um, if I'm sitting here and uh, working on the magazine or uh, doing something else, then I'm not as neat and tidy as I need to be. And so a couple of weeks ago, the Holy Spirit was dealing with me about that. And I had to Listen, I had to correct myself and get myself in order because I want a certain thing, but in order for me to receive what I want, I must be 
I have to give in. And I can't be wishy-washy with it. I can't do it sometimes and, and then uh, back up. And No, it, it's a standard. The scripture says, who can find a virtuous woman? Who has stability in her abilities? Who has found stability in the way that she lives and the structure that she has? And you take those things and that is how you run your household. That is how you run your life. But if you all over the place, but yet you want the very best, that, that doesn't add up. Mm -mm. If you are one, you're constantly running the street, but you want a mate that is at home and always av you know, available to you. You want him in place, but you all over the place, that don't add up. Mm -mm. That doesn't work. No. Sometimes we want what we're not willing to give. So who can really find that person who gives what they want? That's what that scripture is saying to me. Who can find a virtuous woman? And once again, if you're not married, you're still virtuous. If you don't have any children, you still have the ability to be virtuous. Because you have developed good foundational standards in your life. And you share that with others. But it starts at home. If you don't know how to... Listen, what did it say she did? Uh, she, she, she got tapestry and she did those things. If that's not your area of talent, then that doesn't mean that you're not virtuous. You have other gifts and talents. What are you doing with them? Does your household have the benefit of your gifts and talents or does everyone else? Because I, I can't say it enough, charity starts at home. So everybody else gets the benefit of your good gourmet cooking, your wonderful chicken pot pie, and your homemade chicken noodle soup. But your family don't get that. They getting TV dinners. They getting cold sandwiches. No, charity starts at home. Mm -hmm. uh, they're getting greet uh, people on the outside. They're they're getting greeting cards. They're hearing "I love you." And, and they're getting a warm embrace of peace but the people in the house are getting the attitude and the cold shoulder you can't talk to them you don't even say their name you, you, charity starts at home and so it's a, it's a time for all of us to step back and evaluate what is it that we really want because what you want should be a reflection of who you are that's virtue we can't say it any plainer. That's virtue. But do not allow just the notion of that she was married with children. Say that you're excluded from that because you're not. You have the ability. It is in you. Set some standards. I like to have these conversations with uh, young ladies coming of age to set some standards. In their home. Sometimes we look for uh, our mates to provide. Oh, I want the best of the best. I want my house done a certain way. I want these finances. I want all of this. But yet, we're not there. That's not that. Mm -mm. But then we'll say, Oh, they, they, they don't measure up. They ain't good enough for me. What do you have for yourself? What have you built for yourself? Where are your standards? What are you bringing to the table? That's what it's about. Who can find a virtuous woman? What are you bringing to the table? If you expect your mate to have their own place, a job or career or even business and nicely furnished a certain way look at you look at yourself and say is that where I am is that what I have 
Because what you have is going to reflect what it, it, it should reflect. It, it, listen, it's. But somewhere along the lines, we have not taught our young people this. Somewhere along the lines, we have taught our daughters to find someone who is financially stable, who can provide you with all of these things. And we fail to teach our daughters to get a good education, get a good job or career, get some business sense about yourself, learn how to run a household, even when it's just you. So that when you begin to look for a mate and that individual begins to look for a mate, you have something in common. And so that is, that's Proverbs 31. She received a reflection of herself. It's a lesson for all of us. We want, but we're, we're not willing to give it. Or sometimes we want things that we, we don't even possess. We don't listen. Sometimes we want something it ain't we want something that ain't even on our level. We want something that we can't even comprehend. We just want it because it look good. It, it, that? Standards come with that stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. It comes with it. So I want to encourage you today. You are virtuous. And yes, you deserve the absolutely best. But first, give yourself the best. Develop some morals, some foundational principles. Begin to walk in those things. Seek after what you listen give yourself what you're seeking after mm -hmm. yes don't let all your finances go on clothes get some education learn a trade get a craft mm -hmm. yeah sow a seed into yourself pour it in your, into yourself build yourself up Stop looking for somebody else to do it. And at the appointed time, when you meet who you're going to meet, you can have something in common. It, it won't appear that you're after what he has, and it won't appear that he's after what you have, because you both have your own. I pray that what we've shared with you has been food into your soul. Join us tomorrow via Facebook Live at 1230 for our midday Bible study. Have a blessed day, everyone.